so excited to be here. We all are, because this is truly a legendary lunch. And it really is to be in the presence of these two gentlemen who, for many of us, informed, entertained, and made, in my case, my childhood, my teens, my twenties, with Hancock's half hour and Steptoe and Son. To be actually to be in their presence is something very special indeed. <laughs> Later they will pass among you so you may touch their gun. <laughs> And to see them sitting together like this one, not a double act, they're an old married couple. It's wonderful. And they're actually holding hands, it's very, very sweet. Wonderful. Under the table, one can't hear, the other can't be heard. It's a marvelous. <laughs> and it's inspired me to see, since they are an old married couple, to reveal, because I know diary writers come to these events hoping for a story, and there is one today. After a long, very happy and secret relationship. Barry Cry and I would like to come out. <laughs> I don't know which is Bosie and which is Oscar. <laughs> I think probably this is the result of the coalition. And <laughs> I think has changed in the country since May the 6th. The advent of this coalition has changed all our attitudes to everything. I mean, watching that after the general election, seeing as it were, it, it amounted to a civil partnership ceremony broadcast live from the Rose Garden at number 10. <laughs> to see those two gorgeous boys sashaying down the steps, <laughs> coming up to the podium. They're both over six foot tall, you know. They're both over 40, but don't look it. Lovely <laughs> posh boys, they have lovely sleek hair. They came up to the podium together. They're slightly better than MS suits, you know. <laughs> With their coordinated but not exactly matching ties, mirroring each other body language. It's just a beautiful thing to see. I watched it on television, I have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, with the sound turned down and my Judy Garland CDs. <laughs> I am the author of the Oscar Wilde Murder Mysteries. And Oscar Wilde has been a hero of mine for most of my life. And it came about because I, in my parents' house, my father was a lawyer, and he owned a book published in 1948, by, uh, written by H. Montgomery Hyde, The Trials of Oscar Wilde. And this book is the first non-fiction book that I read. When I was only six or seven years of age, yes, I graduated straight from The Adventures of Billy Bunter to the trials of Oscar Wilde. <laughs> My analyst says this explains almost everything. <laughs> and I was fascinated by Oscar Wilde. He was my first true life hero. And my first fictional hero was undoubtedly Sherlock Holmes. I was brought up in Baker Street. My parents lived in a block of flats above Baker Street tube station, Chiltswood Court. H.G. Uh, Wells lived in this block of flats. Arnold Bennett lived in this block of flats. And when we were living there, in the flat next door to ours, lived Huey Green. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just think about it. If opportunity had knocked at a different door, who knows? I might end up as Peaches Gilbert's straight uncle. <laughs> celebrated address in all literature. And so Sherlock Holmes was my great hero. When I went to a boarding school called Beedales in Hampshire, the first play that I put on, that I directed myself, wrote myself, was called A Study in Sherlock. And I was 14 and a 12-year-old boy, a young actor called Simon Cadell, who was at school with me, who may remember him, died a few years ago, famous for Heidi High, a great classical actor as well, Barry and I were talking about him earlier. He played Sherlock Holmes. And I, I know, I do know that others have been good, you know? Uh, I know that Jeremy Brett was matchless, but I have to tell you that Simon Cadell, age 12, the way he smoked that bike, <laughs> <laughs> And yet at this school, my heroes being Oscar Wilde and uh, Sherlock Holmes, curiously I met the founder of the school, a man called John Badley. 
And this old gentleman still lived in the school grounds. We're in the 1960s, and Mr. Badley had been born in 1861. He died in 1963 at age 102. I knew this old gentleman. And this old gentleman was both a contemporary and a friend of Oscar Wilde. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, after you've bought my book, you may shake my hand. <laughs> You'll be shaking the hand that shook the hand that shook the hand that wrote the importance of being earnest. Goldman and Simpson can offer you a great deal, but they can't offer you that. <laughs> and I discovered not too long ago that uh, Arthur Conan Doyle, the creator of Sherlock Holmes, and Oscar Wilde have become friends. They met in 1889 at the Lanham Hotel. There's a plaque outside the Lanham Hotel, which I had the privilege of unveiling earlier this year, commemorating this encounter. I love unveiling plaques when I was, when I was an MP. I unveiled plaques whenever I could, you know. Uh, it's the kind of thing MPs like to do, because you get photographed unveiling the plaque, and then you get the double whammy, the picture appears in the paper, people walk by, and think, oh, he's been here, he's doing something useful, or he's harmless. <laughs> but please know that I was a respectable member of Parliament. <laughs> I dug my own moat. <laughs> my darling wife should pay for all her own DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> the last black I unveiled in fact was that a doctor's surgery in my constituency pulled the string, the velveteen curtains parted, and there I read the words, This plague has been unveiled by Jack. <laughs> <laughs> But the plant that I unveiled outside the Langham Hotel commemorates in 1889 the meeting between Oscar Wilde and Arthur Conan Doyle. There was a dinner the year after the Jack the Ripper murders were in all the papers. An American publisher wanted murder mysteries from these two men. And as a result of this encounter, Oscar Wilde wrote the picture of Dorian Gray, and Arthur Conan Doyle was persuaded to write a second Sherlock Holmes story. He had no plans to do so, but he was persuaded to write the sign of four. So this was an extraordinary literary dinner. And a hundred and more years later, I had the idea of creating Victorian murder mysteries featuring these two remarkable men. Because Mr. Bagley, the founder of my school, Oscar Wilde's eldest son, also went to beat us, told me that it was to him that Oscar Wilde gave the advice, murder, never commit murder. A gentleman should never do anything he cannot talk about at dinner. <laughs> and so I tried to recreate the Victorian atmosphere and write murder mysteries in the tradition of Dorothy L. Sayers, Agatha Christie, those old-fashioned murder mysteries. I think they're called cozies now. One does feel cozy reading them, you know? You want the snow to be falling outside the window, the roaring fire is crackling, the Labrador is asleep, snoring gently. It's funny how attractive it is when the Labrador snores, but when your husband does. <laughs> That's the kind of murder mystery I've wanted to write, and I've now written four of them. And the